The jazz services were also an outstanding success and proved that there was still life in the steam engine, despite all those thoroughly modern electrics elsewhere. Born on the 1st of January 1923, the LNER was the poorest of the big four railway companies formed to consolidate the major railway companies of Great Britain into four large conglomerates to help them overcome the backlogs of maintenance from the Great War and to better enable them to compete with other forms of transport. Nationalisation had been considered but rejected in favour of these four joint stock companies, incorporating some of the famous companies which had so dominated British transport during the railway's golden age which had been so ruthlessly destroyed by the social changes wrought by the war. All the companies turned to publicity to establish their credentials. The LNER's very first built locomotive might be considered to be one of the greatest publicity coups ever. Number 1472 was a locomotive already under construction as the third member of a class introduced by the Great Northern Railway and upon its completion on the 24th of February 1923 it became the new company's flagship. A year later it was renumbered 4472 and christened Flying Scotsman. There's some confusion as to who was the original Flying Scotsman after whom the engine was named, but the name had been unofficially used to describe the principal express trains from London to Edinburgh and vice versa since the 1870s. The trains, the 10 o'clock departures from King's Cross and Edinburgh Waverley, had the somewhat pedestrian official title of the Special Scotch Express and first ran in 1862, shortly after Victorian society was changed forever by the death of the monarch's husband, Prince Albert.